Well, good morning, everybody. This is Dale Mama Sal on a very overcast sort of day. It's seven degrees Celsius here in southern British Columbia, which would make it about 44. Yes, 44 in American. I hope you all will forgive me for the fact that I didn't do a couple of vlogs in the last few days. Um, I don't normally do them at the weekends anyway, but I was unfortunately uh, not capable of doing them for the last couple of days. I woke up Monday morning and my body didn't want to respond very well. I not only was having difficulty walking, but also my brain was like um, unusually fuzzy, let's put it that way. <laughs> So it was just like, I think I just overdid it this weekend. So I listened to my body and I stayed in bed uh, Monday thinking I'd be fine to go to work on Tuesday. Not so much. I uh, woke up yesterday, managed to get out of bed to try and make coffee and then went, oh God, no, this is still not going to work. And so I literally had half the cup of coffee and this was probably at about 7.30, 7.15, 7 7.30 in the morning. I turned over and I didn't wake up again until 2. So I think that's a pretty fair indication that my body just was exhausted. Now this morning, I still don't feel great, but I feel capable of going to work, which is my benchmark. I always, uh, I have a benchmark um, that is, suits, serves me well. Uh, I go, when I wake up in the morning, do I feel well enough to drive my car? That, that's funny enough. I don't ask, do I feel well enough to go to work? I ask myself, do I feel well enough to drive my car if ever I'm not feeling well? And in that, what I'm saying is, do I feel alert? Do I feel capable of making a decision in an emergency or something like that? And that is actually how I decide how sick I am. And if I don't feel well enough to be driving a car, then I don't go to work. And that's just my benchmark. It's not, I want a day off, it's about, I don't feel safe to drive. Anyway, so that's my thing. What was it? I think it was total exhaustion. Um, it's interesting that my body stayed in performer mode all weekend. And for those of you who understand performer uh, mode, I'm certain you will totally understand that. Uh, your body is capable of doing that. The unfortunate part of it, though, for those of you who might not know, is that you burn up so much adrenaline that when you come down off that, uh, when, you, when, you, when you tell your body, okay, fine, you can come out of performer now, uh, it's like somebody took the air out of your balloon, you know, it's like a all around the room, and then you gone. <laughs> and... It's a, if you've ever had it happen, if you've ever been a performer, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. By the way, I wanted to thank uh, all of you who helped me on the uh, contouring thing. <laughs> because one of the things that was said to me over the weekend was, I, they think I did a better job of contouring than they did. And this is from young people. <laughs> I was pretty impressed with it. Um, it's that kind of them. So cute. I think there's something very, very rewarding about working with the next generation of young people. It gives you a chance to tell them that not all old farts are old farts. 
It gives us a chance to tell them that we believe in them. It gives us a chance to remind them that whatever their talent is, it is needed in the world. Whether it's music, whether it's kindness, whether it's whatever. And you know that leadership isn't a title. It's an action. So you don't have to be given the title of leader to be a leader. You just have to act the way a leader would. And I would say that for the large part, many of us understand that difference. In the old days when I grew up, the word was management. You had to be able to manage everything. Well, a lot of people managed by fear. Very few led. Very few people were leaders. I want to just address um, something that I've been made aware of over the weekend. And that there is a, a situation going on, and I don't quite know how else to describe that, where supposedly somebody said something about somebody, and then that thing got escalated because nobody wanted to own that they'd said anything. And this was unfortunate because this was through some of my broadcast viewers. But the reason I'm going to talk about it is because it happens to us all at some time and maybe sometimes more than others. And unfortunately, of course, everybody writes to me to tell me about what's going on. And I can't necessarily get involved because as far as I know, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with a certain person accusing another person of having said something about them. What I have noticed over the years is whenever this flares up, it's the same group of people to a large extent, which is interesting to me. Um, the same names are involved, which makes me wonder whether it's a coincidence or whether, in fact, this little group is either correct in what they say or listening to rumors that aren't in fact true. So I don't know and I can't judge that because it's none of my business. But here's what I would recommend to everybody concerned. Um, I know we've now again lost a viewer because of it and that's their choice and I understand that and I, I don't judge that either. I've got another situation where it's just too much drama for some people. And who needs drama in this day and age? You know, you don't, you don't need this. And the sadness is that it has to do with broadcast viewers. Yeah, you know, we all hate it when we have haters, uh, but when we have them 
busy doing this sort of stuff and their friends, if you like, uh, that's even more sad. However, I totally understand that anybody who thinks somebody else is talking about them has the right to complain about that. And I understand that. I also understand the other side that says when somebody is falsely accusing me, I have the right to not want to talk to them. Or when I believe somebody might have um, betrayed a confidence, I can understand that. So here's the thing that I would like to suggest to everybody, which is take a deep breath and understand that sometimes these things get escalated because of hearsay rather than reality. Hearsay being what somebody says somebody said. They weren't necessarily in that conversation. Um, but also it I had somebody write to me and say to me, there are people talking on your behalf, Sal. Now, I don't know quite what that means, but I gather somebody is saying that, giving my opinion on, and I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if they're giving my opinion on something, then they probably are doing so with good intent. I'd like to believe that. Um, but my opinion is my opinion, which is why I decided I would just address it quickly here. So, just as a learning lesson for us all, if I reacted and pulled the plug every time somebody said something nasty about me, we wouldn't have Dear Mama Sal, and we would not have done the good work that we have. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not saying you shouldn't unplug the plug that you have pulled, if you're still listening. What I'm saying is, understand that I deal with this <laughs> almost on a weekly basis sometimes. And I keep asking myself, what is really important here? To me, what is really important is that we do the work that I continue to produce the vlogs that hopefully will help one person. And by the way, if this little discussion helps you, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. Because all the time, what we're looking for is to find little conversations that will make you go, you know something? I need to give that a second thought. Because if one person does that, then I know it's worthwhile doing. Now, the other thing that goes hand in hand with this, that if you have thought about this and decided maybe I added to the drama rather than de-escalated it, then have a look at that and decide what you'd like to do. I'm not saying change anything. What I'm saying is have a look at it. For example, I could have added to the drama of almost everybody who wrote to me. And I chose to not do so. I chose not to defend anybody. I chose not to judge any actions. I chose merely to help the person that wrote to me deal with what was going on. It happens in life, people. People are going to spread rumors. People are going to form cliques. People are going to try and gain strength, power, or whatever by putting you down. You will all hopefully remember my story about the lobsters. 
the reason they put lobsters into a basket together without a lid is because lobsters will climb across one another to try and get out and in so doing will pull the next person down. And I think what we're looking at is a situation of some lobster action going on here. Somebody doesn't like somebody else's something and they're trying to pull them down. Don't let them do that to you. Hold your head up. Remember why you joined Dear Mama Sal. If you still want to be there, that's great. And if you don't, that's also fine. I believe that part of our work in what we do is to work on helping ourselves as much as helping others, as you know. So as much as you all will forgive me, I hope, for not being perfect in the last couple of days and not being able to take a couple of vlogs and put them together, I'm hoping that you will all take a chance to just look at what you're doing and just take a time out if that's what you need. Or just understand that people will be people. And if you expect them to be perfect, you will continue to not be a happy person. You cannot cut off everybody. What I would recommend, though, is have a look at the friends you've got. When something like this happens, unfortunately, trust gets broken. I trusted this person not to repeat something, or I trusted this person not to spread rumors, or I trusted this person not to whatever. I don't know what it is. But I do know that at some level, for this reaction to have happened, the trust between people got affected. And so, I'm hoping that you've got enough mojo juice left in your hearts to be able to put this back together if you want to. And that is the other thing that we all know, that it takes two people who want to move on and find common ground uh, to make that right. On the other hand, it is your right not to do so. Wow. <laughs> and I totally understand that, as you know, because I've got people in my life that I've literally had to pull the plug on. All right, everybody. Didn't mean for this to be such a serious subject today, but it is one because it's part of life. And so I ask you just to be aware. Hope you'll stick around to help us help people because the core group of broadcast people are the people who have helped do that so many times. But it is what it is, and I respect everybody's opinion in this one. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day. Look after one another, but most of all, as you know, let's look after ourselves, as I did in the last couple of days. This is Dear Mama Sol saying bye-bye for now. Thank you.